Hello and welcome. My name is Shlomi Zeltinger and this video tutorial is a part of a project that I am working with Alexis Gallape, my, co my colleague, and we have decided to create our own implementation of some of the features which are described in the Bitcoin protocol and we are doing so using Python 3.5 and you can read more about our project both in my blog which is zeltzinger.com and at the github where you can watch our source code i will leave links for both pages in the description below and our project we're basically trying to create some sort of an environment which will allow user to interact with the bitcoin blockchain in different ways and after we have created quite an extensive documentation of how our project is supposed to work, we have decided to summarize some of the tools which we have managed to develop so far. And the example that we are going to use in this video tutorial, in this video example, will be how to send a version message to another node on the network. And by doing so, we will explain and exactly how each part of the code interacts with the other part of the code. And I will hope that it will help you guys watch this to understand how our project, our code base works. So let's dive right in. Over here you can see the folder structure. This is the folder structure for our code. And this is not a complete folder structure. There are many more files and folders in the original source code, which you can watch it on GitHub. But these are the files and folders which are necessary in order to send a message, a version message, to the remote node, to the remote machine. And you can see that we have the main folder. This is BitPy. BitPy is the name of our project. And the other folders are Manager, Network, Packets, Inside packets, we have two more folders. We have control messages and data messages. We also have our UI folder and the utilities or utils folder. And under the bitpy folder, we can also find our main Python, main py. This is the file that you need to run in order to get the entire code, in order to get our entire pro program to run. And this main Python file, it looks like this. And you can see that it contains four major parts. The first one is the connection to our node. In this part, we are going to declare a socket type variable, a socket type object. And we do, it, and we do so using the connect class, which is defined in our connection file over here, connection.py. And this is what the connection.py looks like. This is a basic code which has the function connect. And this function basically going to create a socket type object, which will allow us to connect to the other node on the network. The IP address and the port of that remote node is specified at the top of our code. And you can change it manually if you like just insert a different IP address and it will connect to another node. If you, have the, if you have the IP address of another node, then just insert this IP address over here. And once the connection has been established, it will return that sock object, that socket, to our main file. You can see that over here we also declare the receiver and the sender. Now I'm not going to talk about the receiver because this video is aimed to show how to send a version message. Um, but the receiver code is not a different actually. But again, we are talking about how to send a message. So let's have a look at our sender, sendermanager.py. This is our sender manager. You can see that our sender manager, this class, sender manager, we can see that this class, this sender manager class, basically take some sort of a queue which is defined in the utilities global files over here. And this file 
it's defined you can see on the top the send in queue it will basically take every type of message that we want to send and it will se and it will basically place them in one queue which will allow to send them in the proper order the first message the second message the third message in our case we're only going to send one message so the queue doesn't really matter the order is very simple there is only one message we are going to send but in the future maybe we want to send more than one message in a time we want to send two three four messages at a time and so it will be very useful to have them um, waiting in line to be sent one after the other so once this queue this sending queue has been declared so this is basically what the um, our sender manager will do it will take this queue and it will send each message one at a time. So this is it about the sending messenger, the sender messenger. And you can see that the last item in our main.py uh, file is to fire the manager on the core manager. The core manager is over here, core manager.py. And this is what this file looks like. And you can see that it has this class, which is called manager. And this is the class that we have just called at the end of our main.py file. And basically this class, it does a very simple thing. It asks the user to insert um, numbers between 0 to 2, which represent the type of user interface that the user wants to, to interact with. Currently, we are offering a command line option. We are offering a tinker, at least I hope I say it properly, a tinker option. And we are offering a PyQt5 option. The PyQt5, this is the graphical user interface. And I highly suggest that you will use this PyQt5. Um, you might need to install a library in order to use this PyQt5 option but it's not really that complicated and I think it's worth it and we will provide some information on which libraries you might need to install both on GitHub and in my blog so again you choose whichever one you want but I highly suggest that for now you will use the uh, PyQt5 this is the one which Alex and I will probably continue to develop in the future and I'm not really going to tell you how those user interface works. This is um, a bit irrelevant for this video tutorial. But basically, once you will file this user interface, you will see, for example, for the PyQt5, you will see that you will have many buttons. And for example, you will find over there a button which is to send a version message. So once you will press this button, so once you will press this button, it will call one of the following functions. If, if you press on the get version message, it will call this get version packet. If you press on get ver hack message, it will look for this get ver hack packet, get address packet, and ping packet. And um, we also have get blocks packet. And in the future, we're going to have more functions and more options. But for now, we want to call this get version packet over here and once we call this get version packet we can see that at first it will look for this encode version class under version and the version file is over here in packets packets control messages version.py and this version.py it looks like this it's quite long but don't worry it has two parts one encode the version this is the one we are going to use the second one is to decode a version message decoding a version message basically means to decode an incoming version messages we are not going to do that in this video tutorial we are only going to deal with encoding a version message we want to create a version message and we want to send it out now over here you can see that we have a list of fields don't forget a message in the Bitcoin protocol is no more than just a string of bytes, a string of fields. It's just one field append to the other field, append to another field, etc. Once again, you can read more about it, both in the Bitcoin um, developer reference and on our blog as well. And once we have inserted all of this information into 
our version message, then we need to forge our version message, which basically means to um, append all of our fields into one single string and return this string to our call manager. And then we take this string, which is now called version, and we give it to our class packet creator and call the function forge packet. The packet creator is defined over here, and this is what it looks like. It will take the payload, it will create header for this payload, it will create a header for this payload, and once again you can read about what type of field should be inserted into this header in our, um, in our blog. And once it's completed to construct this header, it's going to do another forging, which basically means to place all the proper fields of the header and the proper fields of the message itself, of the payload, into a single string. And then this string will be sent using our sender manager to the remote node on the other side. And this is basically how our project is built. And most of the basic messages that we want to send will basically go through the same process, which means to first fire the main file. The main file will establish a connection. It will establish a manager, which will deal with the outgoing messages. Um, it will place them into a line, into a queue, and then it will send them one after the other. Um, using the graphical user interface, we are able to choose which message we want to send. Once we choose which message we want to send, then it will look for the proper file. For example, if you want to send a version message, it will look for the version file. If you want to send a ping message, it will look for the ping file. Inside that, it will look for the, it will look for the class encode the message. Within this class, we will insert the field which is supposed to be part of that message. We will return the string of this field. This is the payload. The payload will be sent to our packet creator. The packet creator will create header for that payload. It will um, append the payload and the header together. And then it will give them to the sender manager, which will place them in the queue and will send them in the proper order. And this is it. This is basically how our um, code base works. And I hope you find it useful. And once again, you should also take a look both at our blog and at GitHub to watch our uh, source code. So just read through both of those sites and we'll see you later, I guess. So just before I leave you, let's have a look at how it actually looks like. This is a PyCharm. This is what I'm using in order to work with my code. I'm going to execute the main uh, .py. Once I fire this main.py, I need to choose which user interface um, to work with. I'm going to choose number two, the Python Qt5. And it will open the following window. So this is the window. And over here at the bottom, you can see that I can choose which message to send, a version message, var hack, and ping. This is currently the only one which, which we have implemented into our GUI interface. And once we have sent the message, we can see over here at the side, we have a list of all the messages that we have received. And we can press on that message and see the information from that message, the header, and what this um, message contains, the fields of this message. We got this for version, ping, address. If I will send another ping message, then I get another new message called pong, get it back. And this is it. This is basically how it's supposed to work for you. And in the future, we are going to implement many more functions and we are going to implement many more uh, messages that can be sent. Um, and, and that's it for now. I'll see you later.